All right, I got you now. Uh, request. What about now? Better? Finally, we good, bro. I know. <laughs> My bad about being late, bro. I didn't know when. I'm on the Central time, bro. I forgot you in, you in New York, right? I'm in PA. Oh, you're in, yeah, you're in Pittsburgh, even? Yeah. So you're on East Coast time. Yeah, we, it happened twice already to me. There's one guy from the Yankees. He, uh, he was in Arizona. He was in Tennessee. I was like, hey, we going live at 7. And he hit me up at like 8 p.m. I was like, hey, you was late already. <laughs> we had to oh, pick no, another no, day. No. That's why I was blowing you up. I was like, man, I don't know where he at. So how yeah, you been, talking. though? I'm good, bro. I'm just chilling, man. Just got done uh, throwing, getting my second my second set of throwing in for the day. Um, just chilling, bro. About to just hop in the shower after this call with you and get ready for dinner and just post. Work, working a lot. I see you working a lot. Yeah, man. I'm trying to get out there, trying to stay active, yeah. man. Like, you know, I don't. I don't want to let this quarantine or this corona knock my game. I feel you. I feel you. Big, big year coming from you. A lot of people expecting a lot of things from you. Yeah, I already know, bro. And man, I'm hoping that uh, we get some, we get some word next week on what's gonna happen. So you know, I could, I could hop on that road and get back to wherever I, uh, wherever we gonna. Start. All right, right there. Can you hear me good now? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Okay, okay. But, hey, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to ask you a couple of questions about your career, how you made it to the league and everything. And just a couple of questions about your life, personal life and stuff like that. Nothing personal, personal, but, you know, like when before you was a baseball player, little uh, Kayla, I know that. That's all we want to know. Yeah, for sure. All good, man. So, so I'm a... Uh, I'm going to introduce you, ask you a couple of questions, and we go from there. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready, bro. Uh, <clears throat> with us tonight, we got the new closer for the Pittsburgh Pirate. You got to help me out with your name. Keone Kella, right? Keone Kella. You got a middle name, though, right? Yeah, Cole. Keone Cole Kella. He was born April 16, 1993. Where were you born, and how was your childhood back in the day? Like, when you was little, you was a good boy or bad boy? <laughs> I mean, I was, I was both, man. I I got in a little bit of trouble here and there, but I try to stay on the the best path that I could, bro. You know, without cutting up too much. But um, yeah, I was born, I was born in LA, man. Raised back and forth between California and Seattle. Um, man, I had a decent childhood, though, man. Like I can't complain. Um, you know, grew up, growing up in LA, sometimes stuff was rough. Some in Seattle, sometimes it was rough, but it was sweet on both ends as well. You know, I got to see a lot of different things going up and down PCH, the West Coast, bro, from Seattle down to LA. And um, I'm blessed, man, grateful. I got to experience a lot of the things that I did and, you know, because they definitely have helped me build momentum to get to where I am now. Do you have any nickname, like before or, and now? Key. Everyone's called Key. me Key for most of my life. Yeah, Key, because it's hard for people to pronounce Keone. I know, it's tough. It was hard on me. I was... I mean, on YouTube all day looking up, and I'm like, man, I had to pronounce this right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's it's Keone, and um, I got an accent over the E because it's uh, it's supposed to be spelled with the I, but my mom put an E at the end of my name with an accent on it. So, yeah. Hey, I see you got a nickname on mob mob dot com. What is that nickname? Yave, Key. Yeah. Yave, it's like okay, it's Yave, and in Spanish. Spanish. Yeah. I was gonna ask you, isn't it? Yeah, it's in yeah, Spanish. Yeah. So, why, why though? I mean, bro, because I've had I've and that was for Players Weekend, and I've had um the nickname Key prior, so I just like switched it up because you know I mean I just try to have fun, man, with it. Like I I, don't, I take those those uh, opportunities to kind of like just you know what I'm saying show show who I am in in different ways, man, and. Obviously, all my Latino brothers, you know, your cousin, your primo, and Marte, and all those fools, you know what I'm saying, and Polanco, and all the boys, you know, they like, they call me Yave or whatever, you know, because key, key's key, but, you know, shout out to all my, my Latin people, bro. They be showing love, huh? <laughs> yeah, they show love, bro. Everyone thinks I'm, whenever I'm out in, like, New York or 
Boston or anywhere on that side of Florida. Everyone thinks I'm Latin. I know. I mean, when I first met you, when I first saw you, I really never really got a chance to talk to you in person. When I used yeah. to tell Starlin, I'm like, hey, I thought he was Dominican at first. But <laughs> when you first got traded, because you used to play for the Rangers, though, before you went to Pittsburgh. So I was like, man, he, I swear you was Spanish for the whole, the, the whole time. I was like, man, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. no, nah, man. And I love, I love my, my Latino people, bro. Like, they've definitely shown me nothing but love my entire career. And, you know, I've had the opportunity to go play in, like, Venezuela and go to the DR, be in Puerto Rico and travel all over South America. So, you know what I mean? I'm definitely blessed with the opportunity to have some good friends out in those, those parts of the world. That's good. That's good. So, do you play any sport other uh, besides baseball? Any other sport besides baseball? Uh, yeah, growing, growing up, up I, like yeah, growing, growing up, up, football. Yeah, I played football growing up. Um, I mean, I played everything, bro. I tried to like dive into everything, man. Like, um, you know, even in the summers, bro. Everybody used to go to the community pool. I used to think I was Michael Phelps, bro. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I either get on that high dive, bro, and try to do, you know, just double flips and gators and different stuff like that, man. I've always been an athlete, so I've always um, played every sport, bro. Like, I, I've never, I don't discriminate, man. I've tried everything, man. I mean, we used to play pickleball in elementary school, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or uh, what's the one with the birdie? You used to hit the little birdie over the net? Yeah, yeah. I used to play that in high school a lot. I thought I was good, but I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but man. I played, you said, I played all you sports, said, but, man, Football. You said football, right? What, what position you used to play in football? Uh, running back and safety. I thought you was a quarterback. You throw a hundred. So to, to, to be able to throw that that yeah. hard, you know, every quarterback usually throw hard. Oh, bro, that, go Batman. That's what that what it was called. That's a whole different IQ, bro. That's a whole different IQ. You know what I mean? Like, not saying it's just that that's a lot of work. You know what I mean? Uh, being a quarterback, and for me, like. I was easier just like remembering my my little my little routes as a running back or you know what I'm saying my little slots and but I was more of a defensive player bro I like to I like to tackle you know what I mean I was more I like the head hunt I was one of those cats Okay you like to heat people up <laughs> Yeah I like to hit, I like to hit growing up that's what I enjoyed um but football just you know I never put my full heart into or my interest cuz I've always fell in love I fell in love with baseball at a very young age and I knew it was something I, was I wanted and now that we're talking about baseball, we're going to get to it. But at what age did you start playing baseball? My mom put me in T-ball, bro, at, uh, at three three years old in uh, Dolphin Park in Carson, California, bro. I played for the little the Carson Cubs, and uh, it's been it's been a grind ever since. Um, started at T-ball and then just you know worked my way up and progressively got better, developed, had a, a opportunity to play with a lot of. Um, a lot of cool, cool, cool people. You see a lot of talent growing up, and you know, eventually was able to have the blessing and opportunity to get drafted and play, play a uh, big league ball. Hey, I got three players. I mean, I got three questions from the fans that I want you, I want you to, to answer for them real quick. That's one. And then I got two more. Can you see it? Yeah, it was cool. It was, it was childhood. Um, man, I think one of my coolest. Coolest memories from when I was a kid, man. Um, it's not just one memory. It's probably just a summer. I remember I played for this uh, this summer ball team um, in Seattle, Washington, called Seattle Stampede. And uh, man, we went. We just won, went undefeated, bro. And I mean, we were we were we were doing really really good. And we played it. We eventually played a lot of different guys that um, that actually came up and or in the big leagues now, you know what I mean? Like the Souza's and uh, Snell and guys like that. Ryan Brett, who used to play for the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. And um, so growing up, that was probably one of my fondest memories, probably just like summer ball when I was growing up because that was the opportunity where we used to all hit the road as a team. And you know what I mean? When we were like eight, nine, ten years old, everybody used to go to the team to the hotel and go to the pool together and all that stuff, bro, growing up, you know what I mean? Like, those yeah. are my fondest memories when I was a kid, you know, just playing, playing with pure love, pure joy and, and passion, man. And it wasn't, we weren't showing up with any other, no other thoughts. It was just tunnel focus, man. Yeah. 
I got two more questions, but we're not going to put it up yet because we got it. I got to go through my list to put it up, which it look good. I don't want to go be jumping back and forth. So that one, since we were talking about back in the day, he fed right into it. Yeah. So you said you started playing baseball uh, at three, right? Yeah. At what age did you really realize that you could be a professional baseball player? I know everybody's dream when they start playing baseball is to make it. But yeah. at, at what age did you really was like, oh, man, I think I can do something with this sport. So at what age did you really thought about, man, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to put my heart into it. Um, I would say like the age that I knew it was, it was real was about 12, 13 years old. Um, right when I hit like eighth grade, seventh, eighth grade, you know, going into high school is when I kind of knew what it was um, just because I was seeing all the talent around me and uh, what they provided, you know, with their, with their skill set, and, you know, playing with all those guys, um, I definitely got to see that I would have the opportunity to play on varsity my freshman year and stuff like that. So that's when I knew that, like, it was real and I really had something with this baseball situation. I mean, I've always had the heart for it. It was just, like, you know, really put forth the effort to, to master my craft, you know what I mean, and, like, put in the extra work so I could, I could make it. So you always threw hard? Yeah, man. I, I feel most probably say I've always thrown hard when it really. What was your What was your What was your uh, average in high school when you used to pitch? 90, 93, 94? Probably like say senior no, senior real. year. Senior year. Nah, for real. Senior year, probably like eighty seven, like ninety two, ninety three. Bro, I didn't. I didn't get my. I didn't get my major growth spurt until um, college. Until like my freshman year of college. Um, I went to every community college out like 45 minutes north of uh, Seattle. And uh, that's when I kind of saw my spike. I, I went from like my senior year in high school being like 87 and 92 to where I was sitting 92, 93. I would go grab a five or six here, depending on how I felt that day. And um, yeah, that's that's when I that's when like my my game definitely just like elevated itself and I was able to take things to the next level. I always had a, a really good fastball because I played the outfield. I mean, I don't know if you ever watched me pitch. I know, I know. I was, I was going to ask you a question, but you're going too fast for me. You're telling everything <laughs> what I don't want to know it yet. <laughs> My bad. I was like, oh, you got to slow down. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's where, uh, that's where, that's where I kind of transferred, like, my skill set was from the outfield and the pitching. And, um, because I always loved hit, hitting, bro, but when I got to college and I started seeing breaking balls that, were you know 84 85 mile an hour sliders and nasty curveballs I wasn't able to, I couldn't cut it bro I couldn't hit once I got to I mean I did all right in college but not like not not good enough to where you know I would say you should really try to continue to focus on hitting so I see you went to Carson high school right yeah I went to a couple of different high schools bro okay but you got I know I see it you went to another school that you got drafted out of there by yeah. Seattle, but they're not signed. Why? Uh, why didn't I sign with Seattle? Yeah. In 2011, it, when you got drafted. Yeah, it wasn't enough. It wasn't really – I mean, bro, they offered me uh, they offered me um, a, a deal that I wasn't very pleased with. Not that I mean, I he was, was drafted bad. in – to let I'm everybody dropping. know, he was, he, he was drafted in 2000 uh, – Round 2029, round 29. Yeah, right? 2011. Yeah, 2011. 2011, round 29. Yeah. And I see kind of, I was reading about you because that's what I had to deal before I even go live with the players. So I was reading about you and, uh, you know, I was like, that round wasn't for him probably. And then I saw that you went to uh, community college and you actually play outfield down there. You play center yeah. field. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I, I, I didn't sign out of high school just because I knew that, um, I mean, I'll just keep it real. I mean, I had some maturing I wanted, I wanted to go through and, I, and things I wanted to experience. I mean, granted, going to a community, community college, you're not going to get, like, that same experience of being at, like, a D1, a major school. But going to college and just having that type of college experience was, like, something I want, I truly wanted to to experience, you know, especially with nobody. <laughs> granted, it was a, like I said, granted it was a community college. Nobody else in my family had been to college. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was just a situation where I just wanted to say I got to, I got to do it. You know what I mean? And maybe 
there was a there was a blessing in disguise if I did you know I did go and obviously there was I ended up getting drafted the next year uh, by Texas and was given a better opportunity um, for for not only me but for my family and so I signed the dotted line and kept it pushing. Yeah, so so I'm just asking you that because you know we in high school we all want to make it. You get drafted, you didn't go. So I'm thinking about maybe he just wanted to give it another try. But another thing is you went to a community college. Like you said, you said that you're the first uh, person of, of your family to go to a, uh, to a college, right? But I got a question for you. Do you have any big school that offered you throughout high school? Like any D1 nah, bro, school? I didn't, get one, I didn't get one D1 offer, bro. Not one. So Not you a D2 grind. offer. You, Bro, I grind. I didn't get a D3 offer. I got one community college offer, bro. That's it. Yeah, that's it. I got one community like you college never, offer, you, and I just I just ran with it. You never put your head down or nothing. You just kept going. Yeah, just kept going, man. And, um, I mean, I wasn't really too spooked about not having a D1 offer. I, I understood the reason why I didn't. Um, it was probably from, you know, just my uh, – my history, my track record of always like moving around, bro. You know what I mean? Being at multiple different high schools and, you know, there was uncertainties in a child, like in a, in a kid my age, you know what I'm saying? With a lifestyle like that, you know, so I can understand how a major team or organization would not want to put forth the effort and invest in a kid like that, you know? So, mm -hmm. and uh, so I just, I just played my cards, man. And went to the Juco, kept my nose clean and just grinded, bro. And, um, like I said, it was 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 blessed and grateful to get drafted in 2012 by the Rangers. June 7, 2012. You remember that day, huh? Yeah. June man. 7, June 7, you said I'm sorry, June 7, 2012. Yeah. You remember, remember that, that day? Yeah, vividly. Tell man, me what was, hold on, hold on. Tell me what was like when, when you get the call from the Rangers. When they called you and be like, hey, we're picking you up in that round. This is the pick. Yeah. No, no, no. What was the process like? Can you can you uh, uh, guide me through it? Yeah. So the process when like you start moving through and you're having like getting gaining um, exposure to all these different organizations and clubs and like that, they have these uh, area scouts who go out, right? And these area scouts are guys that obviously they scout the whatever area they're they're pinpointed they're pinpointing you know for whatever organization they work for. And the guy that I worked with, his name was. Uh, uh, I want to say his name was uh, Tim McGraw, no, but something McGraw. So, I can't remember, bro. To be honest with you, <laughs> I'm gonna keep it G with you. I cannot remember, but it was uh, his last name is McGraw, and um, and he liked me, man, and uh, he put forth the effort to uh, just like kind of you know put some pressure on my name and let people know uh, what I was doing in the Northwest, and it moved from the area scout. Ooh, the regional scout and then from the regional scout I went to a cross checker and the cross checker goes to like um, I think there's one more level but they pretty much they're the ones that are like the direct guys that will speak to the head people in charge to you know speak to the to the uh, GM and stuff like that about who they want to draft the pitching coordinators and different stuff like that but okay. that was pretty much the process man and so what they do is they give you, you they give you your card uh, their cars and you exchange numbers and you kind of chop it up going back and forth and so they can kind of get a better sense of who you are not only as a as a player on the field but as well as off the field so you chop it up with them back and forth and um, you know what I mean and then you just see you see how, how, how things fall bro you just see how so how you go down. so you knew already that that Rangers was already looking at you right and and everything you already yes. knew there was you Okay, but I want you to talk to us about June seven that day. That's the day you really, you get a chance to. I think that was the day they called you. That was the day you signed though, June seven. Yeah. June six was the day you that you got the call. What was the experience like when you get the call? Because you uh you're around your family and everything. So what was that feeling like when when they call you to tell you that you're being drafted by them? Yeah, man, I was excited. Um, where was I? I want to say I was uh I was at like the Talela, um I was at the Talela Casino and Resort uh, right next to this little outlet when I was working at Kohan. I used to I used to work uh, sell shoes at Kohan at this little outlet, bro. 
and they had this little casino uh, right down the road because um, over there, with this, where I went to school at every community college, they have like a, a Native American reservation and stuff like that over there. So uh, they had this local casino that was over there that uh, I met up with my mom and uh, my dad, my stepmom were there. And uh, man, it was it was cool, bro. Like it wasn't it wasn't one of those exciting moments as much as it was in, in high school because I, I had I'd already went through it previously. So the second time I had the opportunity to go through it and I knew that I got the call, I already knew off top that I was going to sign, you know, through the negotiations and talking with the scouts and everything like that. So, and I knew that I would put forth, you know what I'm saying? My effort in really taking this whole baseball career serious. So when they called me, obviously I smiled, you know what I'm saying? Gave my mom a hug, a kiss. Um, and was just ready, bro. Ready to hit the road, ready to pack my bag and go to Arizona and get it popping. That was good. That was good. Yeah. So where did where did you start uh, your professional career? Like at what level? Rookie ball, single. Yeah, yeah I started. I started off at rookie at rookie ball in twenty twenty twelve, bro. Um, but I mean, I would say I wouldn't really count that as my first like season. Um, I was because like when you get drafted that same year, you go to most people go to rookie ball unless you're an older guy. Then you'll go to like a short season which is like you get a short season or maybe low A. So for me in my situation, I got drafted. And I went to rookie ball and we had a star study camp, bro. We uh, we actually won the Arizona League uh, AZL league that year. And it was like, man, we had a bunch of balls on our team. It was like me, me, Joey Gallo, Jorge Alfaro, Nick Williams, Lewis Brinson, uh, Ronald Guzman, uh, Nomar Mazzara was on that team. Um, let me think of what other cast was on that team. Uh, Alex Claudio. Uh, so, man, we had some. We that's had some that's the lefty, right? Yeah, the lefty with the Brewers. Okay. Now. Yeah, so we um we had some ballers on the team, man, and uh, it was fun, bro. It was real fun. So, but it's like cool. I was saying, like I was saying before, though, but my, I think my first real like season only in Low A in Hickory, North Carolina, with the Crawdads. Okay, okay. So tell me about your worst and best experience in that minor. <sighs> best experience? Um, probably playing with that my first full season in the, in the minor leagues. That team was crazy. I mean, we hit more home runs in the major leagues in <laughs> that year, bro. No, no, for real. Like our, our first half, Joey, Joey Gallo hit like 40, 42 his, his first campaign year, bro. I mean, we had dudes that were bopping. Nick Williams went and got him like a dub. Uh, we had hell of people on that team, bro. Carl Edwards was on – CJ Edwards was on that team. Connor Sazic was on that team. He's a big leaguer. Jose LeClerc was on that team. He's the closer for Texas. Um, Claudio, we had ballers. We just had straight ballers on that team. And um, we, were dog we were dogging everybody out, bro, in 2014. You you didn't want to play the crawdads. I don't think we. I ended up we we didn't end up winning uh, winning that league, but we were we did really good that year. I think we won the first half though. Okay, that's good. That's good. So what was your? Uh, you already so said about your worst experience. Yeah. Yeah. So my worst experience is probably like probably laying on the bottom of the the greyhound, bro. Like we used to. So like, cause you know. You, you've been on a big bus, right, like a charter bus before. And, you know, we big dudes, bro. You know, baseball players, people think baseball players are small. And, like, there's a lot of tall, long baseball players. So, like, if you're on a 14-hour bus ride, bro, and you know you got to play a game the next day, I mean, we were taking egg crates, bro, and, lay, and laying them out on the, on the floor, bro, and sleeping on them under, under people. Like, everybody was doing it. Hold on, give me a second. He said what pick he was drafted. He, I think what what was he was drafted in the twelfth round. round. I think it's like two hundred something pick. Two hundred and something. Yeah. I don't know. So this is crazy because you you was in the minor for three years. Three years. That's what it took you to yeah. make it to the big. I was That's crazy. Too I count two because I don't like I said I don't count that rookie ball. Like your first year don't count, yeah. Your first year don't count because I was looking at it. But you was yeah. in the minor for two years, basically two years. That's crazy. That's that's quick. Not many yeah. people get to make it in two years. 
Yeah. But a lot of people say being a pitcher is easier to make it to the lead than being a hitter, which is true. But being a pitcher, you got to be consistent when it comes down to it, right? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, man. But hold hold, hold on. This is, this, is, this is the question I got, though. So, after three years in the minor, in 2015, you made that Rangers opening day roster. Yeah. You ever thought you was going to make it that quick to the big or no? No, but so you cocky. thought it was going to take you a little bit. I'm so cocky if I say yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're a pitcher. You throw hard. A lot of people yeah, know. Yeah. You know, I mean, a lot of people I work mean, hard. I, Look, I, let's. I, I knew I had a major opportunity to make the team, bro, out of um, at a camp because of just the, the recent situation. Because everything in our sport, just as you know, with baseball, it's all timing. Hitting is timing. Pitching is timing. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I knew that I had an opportunity just from where the Texas Rangers were coming off of their last two seasons in 2013, 2014. Um, and I knew that I had an opportunity if I just showed up and did my job and was consistent, like you said. Um, I've always believed in myself, man. I never, I never, definitely didn't doubt myself. I always got up there and pitched with conviction, bro, and, and left everything on the field every time I threw, I threw, you know, and uh, I just went out there with the, with the mentality to, to handle everybody that stepped in the box. And um, I was able to be successful with that and, you know, um, had the opportunity to make the team, man. But I also had I also had good people that um, that that vouched for me. You know what I'm saying? A B, uh, Beltre, Prince Fielder, Sushin Chu. I had you know I some got, OGs. Yeah, I got three questions. I got three questions here that is basically talk about when you came up and everything. This is the first one. What player who showed you love when you first came up? Prince Fielder. Who? Prince Fielder. Prince Fielder. Yep. Yeah, P P's the one that uh that really like that put me on, bro. He took me under his wing. He um he even let me stay. He he even let me stay near uh at the same building with him, bro. My rookie year, and uh he showed me he showed me love, man. You know, let me let me push his G wagon my rookie year, bro. <laughs> you know, a couple times around the block, and uh, he was cool. People's man, he treated me with nothing but love and looked out and gave me game. Uh, when I was when I was right, and let me know when I was wrong. You know, what I'm saying he always kept it real. So, yeah. Uh, if you can go back to if you can go back in time, what player would you like to face? Man, if I could go back in time, bro, I'd like to face uh, 05 Albert Pujols. 05 Pujols, why? That's a tough. That's, I, that's a tough AB. Bro, that's you a like tough to AB. I see. Bro. I mean, I, I see that you like to compete, though. I seen it last yeah, year when you was well, in Pittsburgh, and I see it all throughout your career. Yeah, Pujols, bro. Like when that MVP two thousand five came out, when he was just dogging everybody in St. Louis. I mean, it was fun to watch, bro. I mean, because I grew up with that. I got to, I got to watch that era of uh, like the Sammy Sosa, Alfonso Soriano, you know, Mark McGuire, all Miguel Tejada, all those dudes. So if I could have faced anybody, it would have been. Holes. I mean, Griffey would have been fun. Griffey would have been fun too. That's it. That's I would have loved to see that one too. You and Pujols, yeah, that man. would have been tough. I, the only one person I was sad that I didn't get to face, bro, because I came in the game too late was Jeter. He left at fourteen, and I came in at fifteen. So like, the main people, like the the main people I got to face, I got to face like Ichiro. Um, a Rod. Uh, I've got, of course I got to face pool holes a lot while he was in Anaheim. Um, guys like that, man, just that came from that different cloth, bro. You know what I mean? That was a whole different cloth that those dudes were made from, bro. Barry Bonds would have been that would have been a fun at bat too. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, what is the difficult adjustment coming from starting games in high school? Be part of the pit. Uh, so that question for Richard, um, I think the hardest adjustment going from being uh, from being like a high school starter to a bullpen guy is mentality. I would say that's the biggest thing um, because when you get into when you when you get to like the elite level, 
of of the game and you even when, even if in college it doesn't matter you know what i'm saying there's different levels to every single level that you go into this game and it's really just about the dog mentality and i think that's what separated me because i think you're i think you could be the same dog but it's a different situation when you're starting because you know you have to go for nine innings when you're an eighth inning or a guy or a ninth inning guy you just trying to come in and blow smoke you know what i mean you're yeah. just trying to come put people away quick and turn and, and turn up and turn and turn turn the lights off you know what i'm saying that's your job is to show up yeah. close the door and so you can go home hey i didn't ask you this before we got to the major league But when you first hit 100, what would you, what was it feel like when you when you threw 100, the first time ever you threw 100? You don't feel it. <laughs> you don't feel it. Like the first time <laughs> but I know like, you you never threw 100. You know, not a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people. Not a lot of people. But the percentage maybe five ten percent right now throwing 100, one on one, one or two, not one or two. But you know, when you first threw 100, what was that feel like? Like. You were expecting it. You knew you just threw yeah, everything you got. I, I didn't. I didn't expect it, man. I uh, I'll never forget it. They had um, this one cat named Tyler Smith from South Carolina, who I was in the same class with me. This is all my rookie year. This is like this is when I made my jump was that rookie AZL league. That's what I like was started throwing flame. Uh, was Tyler Smith and this other cat named Kyle Castro uh, from Elk Grove, which is in the Bay. Um, they were they had the little stalker radar gun and we were facing uh Central Arizona University or something like that, just like on the backfields or something. And uh I could just I just remember I hit it because I could see Kyle Castro and Tyler Smith like on the first base dugout just like jumping up and down like with excitement, like damn, he just he just hit a hundred. And <laughs> um so that was it was exciting, bro, but I knew that just throwing a hundred wasn't enough you know you need to be able to locate that too so you already in the big league april 7 2015 you remember that day right yeah let me show you something real quick hopefully you don't let me down right there that was you that strikeout what was it that was your what first one right yeah it's my first strikeout yeah that what was Talk, talk to me about, bro. All right, right so if you see, if, if you see, bro, if you see, I got, uh, I got what two people on with no with nobody out, bro. I was nervous <laughs> as hell, dog. This is my first day. I was gonna This ask you. Jeff talk Bannister, to me when so. when they talk to me when they come up to you in the booth and be like, "Hey, Keon, go warm up." You got to go in that center, oh, bro. and you already know who you got to face. I had butterflies. I had butterflies. I was nervous, man. I, uh, cause you know, when, you know, when you play in Oakland, when you're in the bullpen, it's on the field, right? And they do the whole little whistle thing. So when you throw the ball, they go, <laughs> and when the catcher goes <laughs> back, they go, <laughs> so that's hella loud. And like, I'm just nervous, bro. My heart is being through my, through my shirt. And I'm trying to prepare myself, you know, like I'm telling myself, like, man, this is everything you work for. Don't mess it up. If you do, you're probably going home. Like, <laughs> I, was just, I, was crazy, I was just crazy nervous. And uh, so I showed up, bro. I ended up getting bases loaded. So Brett Laurie was my first strikeout. So as you see in this video, it's like I got bands on first and second. I think that's uh, Billy Butler. I think at first base is the – Damn, it might be Jed Laurie or something like that. But I ended up getting the bases loaded, bro, with one out, and I got Carlos Corporan. Shout out to Puerto Rico. Shout out to my homie in Puerto Rico. <laughs> um, I got my homeboy. He called a changeup, bro, which is my worst pitch, absolute worst pitch. I know, I was going to ask you this, too, because he, he asked me that question a long time ago. I haven't posted on you. He said, what's yeah. your favorite pitch to use on 3-2 count? It wasn't 3-2 then, nope. It, but I'm just it depends, saying. bro. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I love a 3-2 curveball, but I also love a 3-2 fastball. Like, you know, it depends. If it's mono and mono and you know your fastball could beat this guy, it's fun to go 3-2 full count, just blow by him, you know. But, like, I like freezing people with 3-2 curves. I mean, also depending on who is hitting, too, okay? You're not going to throw a fastball to a, if somebody named Mike Trout, 3-2 count. Man, yeah, I have. It. I, 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 I know, I know. I seen it. <laughs> I throwed it to him. Hey, Mike Trout's clapped me before, bro. I won't even lie. Mike Trout took me deep before, but I don't know if it was a three-two count. It might have been. 
like a two two count and I had I was trying to paint down and away and it ran right over the middle. He said if I'm hitting he throwing me <laughs> uh, that's, that's, my, that's, my boy, that's my that's my boy that's my boy Tyree Thompson, bro. He's in the Rangers organization. Shout out to Tyree, man. <laughs> So I got another right one that I want to show you. This one is tough. It's, it's actually, I'm not even going to say, I'm going to let you say it. Hold up. I got to put my phone this way because I got to read it. Let me see. Uh, June 17, 2015. Uh, you remember that day, right? What day? June, uh, June 17. June 17. What happened on June 17, bro? I'm going to put it there and you tell me what oh, happened. Oh, oh. My what first is- save. You remember who you faced that day, right? Yeah, Howie Kendrick, bro. No, nah, no, nah, you three, you you faced four people that day. You remember all four that you faced that day? Yeah, I think I faced Pui, Howie Kendrick, Adrian Gonzalez, and maybe like Kike Hernandez or something. Nah, J- Jack Peterson. Jack Peterson. Adrian Gonzalez, talk to me about that. Uh, that AB, that's a Hall of Famer right there. I think one of yeah. Uh, Man, I think he took me to the Warner Track Oppo, bro. To be real with you, I was uh, I know. <laughs> I, 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 I uh, he took me to Warner Track Oppo, bro. And um, I mean, it was every time I face a guy that like I idolized when I was a kid, I always get like I get more amped up, and I feel like I have to prove myself. You know what I mean? Because it's like one of those things that you've been waiting. It's like you know, you heard that saying, "Your idols become your rivals," man. Yep. And so, like, it was one of those experiences for me that uh, is so special to me to be able to, like, to be able to play against somebody I once grew up watching when I was a kid, man, and, you know, and those were the people that gave me the, the extra uh, motivation and, the, and, and helped me continue to build uh, intent in what I did, bro, to make it, you know? And so it's always special to face guys like that. But I think I, I want to say... I threw him like a fastball down the way, bro. He almost took me. He almost took me off the taco, bro. I, I know. I was watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it. I watched. It. I seen it today. That's why I wanted to ask you. So July thirty yeah. first, two thousand eighteen, you was traded to the Fish Space Pirate. Where you at right now? You knew about yeah. that trade or no? Uh, I knew about it. At the, my trade was. I found out in like the seventh inning, bro. We were in Arizona. We were in Arizona, and um, I was – I think the homie uh, Jake Diekman was about to pitch or something like that, and I get a call to the bullpen, down to the bullpen, and um, Hector Ortiz was our head bullpen coach at that at that time, and um, he let me know that uh, Skip wanted to see me. Jeff Bannister wanted to see me in the office, bro. So, you know, I packed up my stuff, walked in there, and JD and Jeff Bannister, who was the manager for the Texas Rangers at that at that current moment, uh, they let me know that I got traded to Pittsburgh Pirates, and you know we just shook hands on we shook hands. We you know I we I thank them for the opportunity. They thank me for you know the, the the work that I put in for the years that I was with the Rangers, and you know what I'm saying we broke bread and kept it kept it moving. So when when you get traded, you know you're going to Pittsburgh. Talk to me about yeah. that stadium. When you first get to the stadium, you ever played before there, right? That was your first time yeah, after you get traded time. going to Pittsburgh. Talk man, to me about tight, the stadium, bro. that view, and everything. Yeah, man, it was like a, it was a, it was it was definitely like a picture perfect situation when I walked in, bro. Because, you know, you hear so many things about Pittsburgh being like the steel city and uh, um, and, and and just the history that comes with playing playing with Pittsburgh, bro. With the Willie Stargells and the, the Ralph Kiners and the Roberto Clemente's and Bill Mazeroski's and you know what I'm saying? Like when you when you, you have the opportunity to step onto that field, it's uh it has it has that energy around it, bro. It has that aura, especially and it's one of the most beautiful stadiums that I've ever played in, bro. That backdrop is is the best in baseball. It's one of the, for real. Like to you get to see the whole skyline in the city, you know, you see the Roberto uh Clemente Bridge and on a, on a nice sunny day, PNC is definitely one of the best ballparks in baseball for sure. Yeah, you know I've been there so many times. I've been there for years. 
and you you was there last year. I want to ask you this: you're not not many people get to get to see again in Pittsburgh. They they uh, during the day, night nighttime, and everything. Which which one do you think is better, daytime or nighttime? I like, like when it comes down to when it comes down to see the real. view in the back. All right, for me, I'm gonna be real like. Sunday day games are beautiful, bro. But like that evening game, like when you when game starts at seven oh five and that sun is setting by like seven forty two, seven forty five, and you get that that sun setting, it's one of it's that's my favorite, bro. Is a night game is going into the night. Plus, depending on what like the depending on what buildings are lit up, it's tight, bro. Pittsburgh's hard. And when you're winning, they when you're winning in Pittsburgh, they get after it. They show up. Even, show better. Even better when you win in this. You're right. Man, I, I tell everybody that's the best stadium I've ever seen. Like when it comes down to the best view and everything. You you really yes. go to a game no matter who they playing. It's just you get to enjoy it. Because you get to yeah. look around, you get to walk around, you get to take pictures and everything. It's fun. It's fun. It definitely is. So that's who who you think is the funniest guy? Who's the funniest guy on that scene when you got there in 2018? Tato, for sure, bro. Nah, Marcus. stop. I need to get it. And stop it. <laughs> hey, hey, bro. Bro, Tato's the bro. Stop Marcus. it. That's not right. I've been right bro. too many times. <laughs> He's not, but bro, it's not that he does anything. It's not that he does anything specifically that's you funny. Stop it, yeah, bro, it's just, he's hilarious, bro. He's hilarious. And because, and not only that, like, he, it just, the stuff that he does or the way that he, he, does, he moves, bro, you just want to expect it from him. If you know, you know Marte, so you've been around him. But, like, if people got to really yeah, see Marte, you know Marte for who he is. Because for the most part, he comes off as a real quiet guy from what everyone else sees. And he is, he is quiet. But when you get to be around him and see how he gets down when, when you're around uh, Starling Marte, man, he's one of the coolest people that I've ever had the opportunity to play with, bro. He's a solid cat. He is a funny guy. He is a funny guy. I ain't gonna lie to you. When he not funny, but he a goofy guy. The stuff he be doing is just making funny. Yeah. So I nah, got yeah, another. He's funny, uh, but like. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, I say he's bad. He's bad <laughs> funny, but it's you just gotta be around him in certain uh, instances, certain environments for for him to showcase that. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's he the type of guy that he got to get comfortable with you. If he's not comfortable with you, he's not doing nothing funny. Nah, but when I met Marte off top, bro, he uh, he showed me love as soon as uh, as soon as soon I showed up. I mean, because I think, I think a, you know, some, a gamer or someone who, who gets after it, they know each other when they see each other. You know, real recognize real when you step in. And, uh, you know, I, I, I knew his game. I know how he gets down when he plays. That He's ruthless, you know what I'm saying? He's trying to. He's out there getting, trying to get to his chicken, bro. You know, and so I, uh, I respect, I respect Marte. I respect the way that he plays. I know that um, every time he's played behind me, he's got after and gave it, gave it his all. So it's nothing but love for him. I know, I know. Everybody played the same way, but he played the same way you play. He a winner. He, he don't like to lose. No matter nah, where he, he playing at, he don't like to lose. And you the same way. And I can tell you like to compete. And when you go out there, no matter the situation, even if it ain't nothing, y'all losing ain't nothing, you go out the same way you go out when it's 3-2 when you got to close it. Exactly. And, and... <clears throat> exactly, bro. And, um, that's why I enjoy playing with him, man. I enjoy playing with all the cats in, out there in Pittsburgh, man. You know, you got to have a, um, you got to have some grit. You got to have you got to have that that, you know, I don't want to say, you know, I don't want to get the cursing, but you got to have that, 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 that dog mentality, bro, you know playing in Pittsburgh because it's such a it's such a, a a hard knock city to be in, bro. You know what I mean? And like especially with the the whole love of football, you know, that's a football, that's still a nation right there, bro. Yeah. So you know they when you go out there and on the field, they wanna see they wanna see action. You know, they wanna see dudes put really getting after it and putting putting forth their full effort and they wanna see the passion because you know, like I said before, man, if you're winning in Pittsburgh, they're showing up. When I showed up and we were having the opportunity for a playoff race, bro, it was all love. That's, we, we that, sec it. that second half was crazy. I mean, that first half, right? Yeah, I yeah, think it was the first, first half. half. I showed up 
right after it while we were still in it. You know what I mean? My first opportunity to play. And that stadium, that stadium was rocking. <laughs> yeah. And my first time I was able to play was against um, the St. Louis Cardinals. And my first, I want to say the first dude I faced was Yadier Molina, bro, who's a, who's a GOAT. You know what I'm saying? It's a Hall of Famer right there. And um, it was tight, bro. It was a... Uh, his experience, I'll never forget, man. I mean, I, I remember everything from, from you know, spinning on the ground to when that when that gate opened and they played my music and I ran out on that field. Yeah, a lot of people talk about the <clears throat> Yankees fan, Chicago's fan, and all that Red Sox fan, but Pittsburgh fan, they go at it. They crazy. And if you're yeah. doing bad, they're going to get on your head. They're going to get on your head yeah. and they're going to let you know. Yeah, man, I think Pittsburgh only fits like 32,000 fans too, right? 30 something, 30 or 38 yeah. maybe. Bro, but they make it, they sound like it's 50, man. They sound like it's 50. So shout out to Pittsburgh, man, because, uh, man, they, 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 they showed me love and gave me opportunities, and, I, and I'm forever grateful for that. All right, we got two more questions and we're going to be done because I know you're hungry and you got to go eat, shower, and I know that. I got this one from Dominican Flo. He said, how do you feel about the trade with Marte? Oh, man. I mean, you you've, know, been, you've been traded before. You got traded. So now he gets traded after you. Yeah, I mean, I would keep it real to you, you know, like it's a, uh, it's part of the business, man. I mean, was I, was I like, I was definitely like, damn, we traded, we traded Marte. You know what I mean? But at the same respect, it's like it's part of the business, you know, and I wish Marte nothing but the best in Arizona. And, you know what I'm saying? That was all that was all in his in his, a part of his journey. You know, um, of course, I, I enjoy playing with him. I enjoyed being his locker locker roommate and, and, and kicking it with Marte on and off the field. But, you know, he's he's out in Arizona doing his thing. And I, and I wish him, you know, saying nothing but the best. And I hope when we and I hope when we face each other, he get it's a dog fight, just like I know it should be. <laughs> I know. They, they gotta go out. I get, I was waiting for that too. August, it was gonna be in August in Pittsburgh too. That game. I mean, yeah. I was gonna play them before August anyway, but they was gonna come to Pittsburgh in August. I had everything booked for that day too. <laughs> yeah, you know, I know, man. It's it's crazy, man. It, this whole situation with this with this pandemic, man, is definitely made. Change everybody's perspective, bro, on what's important, man, and what really matters. You know, definitely. It's put, it puts a lot Last of things question. in the backseat. <laughs> Any beef with the Reds? Nah, man, it's all business, bro. I, I, there's no beef there. It's all business. Even when, we see him, even when we see him this year, it's all business. And, they all want to win. Huh? I said, y'all all want to win. Yeah, we all so. want to win, man. You know what? It depends on what they do with this. Depending on what they do with this whole season, with the configuration of the divisions, depending on region, you know, I don't. I, I may not be able to see the the, the Cincinnati Reds into the playoffs. So I so. got a question. Beside the last one, I got to ask you: What do you think about when, let's say, you're facing the Puacuña? He what twenty two. And uh -huh. he hit a home run. You struck him out, and you do whatever you do, and then he hit a home run of you. Of you, what do you think about when people hit a home run and do all the extra stuff? Do you like it or not? Yeah, I like it, bro. Um, I mean, like for instance, and, and I'm gonna keep it all the way G with everybody that's listening or anybody that cares. You know, like I I'm, I definitely enjoy the little bat flip or the excitement. I mean, I think it's good to show personality and show excitement in what you do, bro. Um, I mean, cause you know, I was a part of the playoffs with that whole Jose Bautista bat flip situation. And, um, so I mean, there's oh, yeah, a time yeah. and place for it. There's a time and place for it. But you know, if you over here trying to pimp home runs in the second inning and it's a uh, May, you got it twisted. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's, if it's May yeah. and you over here, bat, you over here bat flipping in the first, second inning when the game just started and. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not going to fly. It's personally not going to fly with me. You know, I don't ever show anybody up. I don't do any crazy antics. You know, uh, I may yell after, like, a big strikeout in a big inning or something like that or say I'm in a bases loaded jam and I strike someone out. I might get after it, but I'm not out here trying to 
embarrass anybody or make anybody the opposition feel like I'm trying to belittle them or anything like that. That's not that's not my game. I, my game when I'm out there is to just make the best man win, best man win. You know what I'm saying? With my best stuff versus your best stuff. If you eat me up, then you eat me up. If I dog you out, then that's just what it is. Yeah, I feel you. You're not the first person to say it. I asked so many Spanish boys that, that that I go live with them the same question. And I just wanted to know what you got to say. And they said the same thing you said. Everything depends the game, the situation, and everything. You know, a lot of people say the first three, five innings, you, you're not going to do that. You know, it's the, the game just started. Yeah. I mean, if you're in the playoff, you hit a home run, enjoy it. You're there for a reason. Y'all work so hard, and y'all make it. Exactly, exactly. And that's what I'm saying. Like, you hit a – you hit a walk off in game. I don't care if it's game one in the division series. You hit a walk off home run or a walk off hit, flex. Do your do what you do, but it's but you just know we got a long ass season. You got to play one sixty two. You know what I'm saying? So I'll trust we're gonna see each other again. So just know that whatever you do, I'm gonna take a mental note to it. So if you out here trying to make me look goofy while I'm on the mound, you know what I'm saying? Because we're both feeding our families off this. I'm going to take offense to that and it's going to get handled on the field. Right. You know, because, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I think baseball, baseball's got a little soft, to be honest with you. It did. So Just like basketball, know, too. I mean, there, and I understand there's a lot of paper behind it. You know what I mean? You don't want to – you don't want to – you don't want guys like the Bryce Harpers who are making $300 million having to worry about taking the fastball to their neck. But you know what? Yeah. That's a, it's, But let's be real, bro. If you were to, to get on Stanwicks in Pittsburgh, if you were to get on uh, Manhattan in New York, you on the street and everybody can get it. And in our arena, when you win the game of baseball, if you if you you know what goes on, you know the unwritten rules in our game. If you're acting up, you're gonna get handled. And that's for even sure, that's including sure. if, I'm, if I'm acting if I'm acting up, the game is gonna humble me. Period. If, if that's for everybody, You're right. bro, that's life. Baseball. That's baseball. I, had, I had a coach that always told me, he used to tell me, Ray, baseball humble you real quick. Yeah, real because quick. Because if so. you do the most, if you do the most, later on, you're going to get into a slump and you just done. And that's when yeah. baseball will humble you real quick. That's when you know, you're like, oh, I should have never did what I did that day. You know, that you just got to stay the same person. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, and I'll be real with you, you know, everything that you do off the field translates onto the field too. So like if you act in some type of way off the field or you're not handling your business off the field, it's going to translate onto the field too. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be, you got to be on point with, with how you're moving and what you're doing with your thoughts, your actions, your speech, everything, bro. Like I'm not, I'm not no saint or nothing, bro, by any means. I just, there's just, you know what I'm saying? There's just code. There's code and ethics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the last question. There's can you give out ethics. any – oh, my bad. I thought you were done. Go ahead, you. <laughs> Are you good? Can, can, you, can you give me uh, – uh, can you give them an advice or any kids that got the same dream as you when you was little, like to make it that they want to be a professional baseball player? Can you pick three words and describe it to them? Yeah. Um, I was just chopping with my homeboys, and I got this game from Russell Wilson in spring training. Uh, we had a, I got to eat dinner with uh, him and a couple of players from the other team, Elvis Andrews, Prince, a bunch of other guys from the team. Were, and he uh, he gave me this word, and it was ICE, bro. And uh, what it standing for was I. The I standing for intention. And I'm going to explain that. The intention is, you know, really believing in your, your mind and your heart and, and and what you want to do, have an intention about what what it is that you want and how you're going to achieve it. So if you want to be a baseball player, for instance, you got to wake up every day and put in that work. Whether if you're a pitcher, you better get on your bands for your arm. You need to do your core work, do your extra sit-ups, or do your extra running, right? So that's intention. The second one is conviction. So C is conviction. And it's about being convicted in all you do, not going through the motions with whatever your work, whatever work you're supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't have, you can't do something with intention but not have conviction behind it because it's not going to work. You know, you're not going to be feeling that pipe. You're going to be feeling the pipe dream with nothing but air. You feel me? And then E would be execution. And execution is just about executing whatever you had your intentions on and being convicted in it 
And like my homeboy right here at the bottom, Gio said, manifesting it. You know what I'm saying? Like is uh is is manifesting that and bring, and wilting it and really like, you know, putting your all to it, man. Because we're we're all magnetic, bro. You know what I'm saying? Every single person that. It's so on this live or now on this live. Everybody got they got the energy to bring whatever they want to their life. You know what I'm saying? True. You just gotta put forth the attention to it. You gotta be convicted in whatever it is. And when that window of opportunity opens up, you better execute. That's for sure. And you talking about you can do whatever you want in this world, you're right, because I've been doing so many Spanish lives, and then when it comes down to you, I tell my one boy the 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 owner of the foundation that run it with me, I'm like, hey, can you do it? Yeah, white guy, they're like, nah, you got it. This is the race show, so you got to do it. I was like, man, now you got me talking my language to my man. But hey, yeah, I appreciate everything. I appreciate your time. I appreciate everything you you talk about your life, profession, and career, and everything. I wish you nothing but the best this season because a lot of people got you guys down as a low key team, like always. Every year has been like that. But I know yes. you being the new closer, I know you're gonna bring a lot of fire to that bullpen. A yeah, lot of man. fire, and you know, y'all lost. <clears throat> I was gonna say y'all lost a big guy, but you know, you still got Josh Bell, you got Polanco coming back, you got Edgar Santana coming back from last year, didn't play. A lot of guy that is gonna help out. You know, you got a lot of a lot of people that already got experience, and now you got you got you yourself that already got experience at you know in the National League. You already know what to work. You you saw the whole thing last year. Now the whole thing because you came in in the second half, basically kinda. But you know, I know you're gonna get to work. So like I said, man, I wish you nothing to uh, nothing but the best. God bless you, and thank you for everything. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to speak uh, speak on on your live, bro. And you know, big shout out, big shout out to the uh, the Keep Smiling Foundation, bro, and anybody. You know, dealing with any type of cancer, pancreatic cancer, anything, man. I, I send my, my love to everybody, man, and I appreciate you again, homie. I appreciate you. God bless you, friend. Peace, G. I'll holler at you. Peace. Hi, brother. Yeah.